Scott, thanks for hopping on another video. You now here with our second video, we're going to be diving into a lot about the financial world in general, the industry, past services, how things have changed. You know, before I start off, Scott, how are you? Doing great, Jason. How are you doing? Yeah, doing good, doing good. We're seeing uh, some crazy stuff happening in the market. Um, obviously, a lot of unemployment we were just chatting about off camera. I would love to get your little insight on later, but you know, let's uh, let's hop into you know really financial services. You know what uh, what is the biggest change that's happened in financial services in the in the past couple of years? You know, since you've been involved in the space, you know where were things and where are things now, and then where do you think things are going? Yeah, you know, I've been in the um, in the financial services space for about twenty five years. And what I've seen, the biggest shift that I've seen is um, the movement away from the wire houses, like the big brands, like the Merrill Lynch's and the Smith Barney's of the world, uh, the big banks, over to um, independence. And, and I think that that movement's really, truly important, especially as the regulations change and the laws change that create uh, more of a fiduciary responsibility for the advisors. They need to have the ability to. Um, have every product and service under their umbrella at their disposal to be able to, to help their clients in the best possible way. So I think that shift from, you know, the, the wirehouse and, and, and the big bank to independence is one that's been predominant over the last 25 years. And, and I think it's a shift that will continue for the next many years to come. Why do you think uh, people took that shift in the beginning? You know, the first thing that hops out to me is, you know, the instant you hear big bank, you don't think like you're getting the, I guess, the care that someone smaller might give you. And you think that, hey, well, they're making money, whether I, I make money or not. What's kind of the, the real mentality behind it? Or am I on the right path? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, once again, I think it all stems from being able to provide the you know the best product and service offering to you know to your clients and um, you know if, if you're with a bank and you have a limited shelf of offerings um, that's not necessarily taking into consideration all the offerings that are out there in the marketplace interesting so people are moving away from bigger banks uh, which which is extremely interesting do you so you see that's going to continue is there other things in the kind of industry you're seeing changing as well well you know obviously um, technology has begun to play a much much more important part in uh, in the industry when when i started um, we would you know write a, a ticket to buy or sell shares of stock or fund on a on a piece of paper and we would put it into this little tube and stick it in this little hole in the wall and it would go suck up into the wall and go across the ceiling and down into a cage and somebody would be there and they'd be typing in the, uh, the, the ticket, you know, the order. Um, now everything's digitized. Um, the world has changed considerably and I think it's going to continue to change the, um, the advent and, and progression of technology. Interesting. I, I'm just obviously picturing, uh, you know, like you see, I'm sure there's movies, um, you know, I know Wolf on Wall Street's like that There's some other ones too, where you just, they're uh, showing the past of what it used to be with exactly like you said, the kind of suction tubes where you're firing, uh, you know, your buy orders across, <laughs> across the ceiling. That's awesome. You know, I guess kind of talking about around an aging population, obviously that the world's going through, especially North America. How do you see financial services changing, you know, going forward or if they've already changed or some of the things that have changed, you know, what have they been recently? Yeah, I think there's a couple dynamics here. Um, number one, um, as people age, they need more help from financial services professionals. Um, they're less willing or less able to manage their own money. Um, whole concept of distribution you know, of making sure that your assets last for your lifetime and that you don't run out of money. Um, it's, it's a very, very difficult, um, art and science. Um, so they need, they, people need, they're going to need help with that. Um, I, I, I think that, um, 
you know, the whole process of estate planning and, and preparing to transfer money from one generation to another is extremely complex. And, and that's going to increase, increase the size and the scope of the financial services profession. So I see it as, um, as a very relevant and very growing business over the next many, many years to come. Um, the other dynamic is the aging um, population of the financial advisors. The, uh, the average financial advisor is, is now in their mid to late 50s. Um, over 25% of all financial advisors are over 65. Um, so I, I think you're going to see a new wave of, um, of growth in the industry where um, new, um, you know, new people are going to be coming into the, into the space and, and helping, um, helping progress the industry to the next step. Interesting. That was a cool dynamic, obviously, uh, not only the, the population aging, but the, the advisors are aging. So cool. You know, really, uh, I guess, pushing that down a little bit more. So retirement um, as part of the financial industry is definitely growing, like you said. What is financial gravity doing to kind of capitalize on, on that move? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, financial gravity is, is a conglomeration of several businesses and, um, you know, the aging or the graying of, a, of America is a common theme throughout all of our financial services businesses. When you look at um, Empath Advisory Resources, which is our insurance marketing organization, we have um, some very sophisticated uh, planning tools to help for multi-generational wealth transfer. So you can actually transfer your wealth um, and, and help minimize the tax on the, on the wealth transfer. As, as we plan for people's retirement, um, it, it's really important that we take into consideration their, um, their financial needs and their financial means and, um, and make sure that they're able to, um, you know, to last throughout retirement and not run out of money. And, and that's one of the core themes that, um, you know, that we've worked through. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I think it comes back to, you know, a lot of, you know, if we talk about retirement to the retirement age, obviously growing, um, you know, the cost of living, obviously also growing. But on top of that, people are living longer. So the amount of financial planning that goes into this, I'm sure is a lot more in depth. Um, and they need, like, at the end of the day, they need more money. So you've got people working longer. And it, I guess, comes back to financial planning definitely makes sense that that industry would be growing and that the need for financial planners is increasing. Yeah, I mean, people are living longer. Um, you know, I think the statistics were 40 years ago, you retire at age 65 and, and you die three years later. Um, now people are living um, much, much longer. And because they're living so much longer and you're having to plan for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years outside of the work um, lifetime and they got to make your money last it, it makes the job of a financial planner and, and the financial services professional so much more difficult and, um, and, and a lot of really sophisticated tools are necessary to help make sure that they accomplish those goals so awesome is there anything you you want to say in act like in excess that we didn't cover about how financial gravity is kind of dealing with the aging population? Yeah, um, I think some of the things that are, are becoming more and more popular, more mainstream, are things that financial gravity has been utilizing tools that financial advisor you know financial gravity has been utilizing for for many years. Um, for example. There are annuity programs, annuity products out there that can help make sure that clients never run out of money, that they get a constant income stream for the rest of their life. Uh, there are really interesting programs that have come out through life insurance companies um, over the last several years, um, IULs, uh, life insurance products that continue to grow with um, the upside of the stock market without the downside risk that allow you to um, to, to grow your asset base, um, potentially utilize that asset base on a tax-free basis, and at the time, time um, you know, when you pass on, it, it transfers to the next generation without um, without taxes. So that's just one example. 
but there are a lot of things that that we're doing to help make sure that um, that we're serving the aging population from a financial services perspective in the most appropriate way. Hmm. Awesome. I think let's cap it off. You know, one last question uh, we're seeing a lot of people ask about how does going through a pandemic, you know, a market crash affect financial services? Do you see more people realizing, oh crap, I really need to focus on financial, um, you know, everything planning and coming, um, you know, to places like financial gravity and some of the companies, or do you see the opposite? Um, oh, I can no longer afford to go to a financial plan or I need to take money away and, and pay back stuff. What's kind of your thoughts on how the financial services industry is hit by, you know, something that we're going through currently? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think that the people that have utilized a professional planner have planned for their future and um, that the pandemic is going to be a, a bleep on the, on the map for them. Uh, they're going to continue to play plan and they're going to continue to succeed. It's the, the people that didn't have a plan. Um, th those are the individuals. Those are the, the people that are going to be most hardly hit by um, hard hit by something like this disruption. Um, those are the people that are most hard hit by, uh, by 2008 um, economic crisis. I, I think it's really, really important that you got to know where you're going in life. And, and the way you do that is by creating a, a plan and having a, um, you know, a sound um, way or a sound advisor that's going to help you get to where you want to go. So you, these people that are going to be hard hit, the people without a plan, you think they're quickly going to be like, wow, I need to make a plan, you know, kind of coming back to the industry as a whole. Do you see it, it growing after this? Be, like. You know, you think more plans are going to be made because now people are aware of, wow, a pandemic can happen. Wow, an economic crash can happen. What's kind of your yeah. insight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when the market goes straight up, everybody thinks that they're a genius. Everybody thinks that they can they can make money and they can do it themselves. And then when the markets go down, they realize that um, that the, the professional uh, the, the person that's there in the trenches with you, the person that um, is, is you know, really helping you call the shots um, is important and it's necessary. And, and I, I think that this, um, that this type of a disruption will, um, will push people to look for professionals to, to help them make better decisions going forward. Cool. Well, awesome. You know, let's, uh, let's leave it there. Anyone who has any questions, make sure, you know, drop your comments below. We'd love to get Scott talking about them. If you have any financial questions, industry questions, um, market questions, he's the guy. So leave your questions below and we'll make sure that we cover them in the next video.